Good morning. And welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. If there is someone here for the first time or visiting, we welcome you. Please let us remove all things that will distract us or others around us and turn off all cell phones and any other electronic devices. We want to remind you that the bathrooms are open for your convenience, but please do not let young children go alone. Always make sure that they are accompanied by an adult. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. As we proceed through the season of Easter, we are given images of people lacking self-confidence alongside people who have enough confidence to defy powerful people seeking to impede them. And these are the same people. Peter, in the Gospel, reveals himself to be rattled by the presence of Jesus. His denial of Jesus gnaws at his conscience. Jesus sets Peter free from his pangs of conscience, and he sets us free as well. Please stand as we welcome our presiding priest, Father Ernesto. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord be with you. Amen. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to this celebration this morning that the Lord has given us. And as I mentioned, you know, uh, Miriam uh, today, she cannot be with us, but we have Jose Luis, and uh, so we're going to have kind of bilingual, you know, uh, mass. Thank you for your patience, but uh, hopefully Miriam will be with us next week. And today's gospel, we see Jesus once again appearing to uh, his disciples, giving them, them food, peace, but especially also talking to, Pe to Peter, uh, really asking him if he, if he really loves him. So for us this week, this day, is a very good opportunity to ask ourselves how much we love God, how much do we love Jesus. And for us, in order to celebrate the sacred mysteries in a little moment of silence, we ask God for forgiveness for our sins, especially when we go away from the love and mercy of God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, who have done what I failed to do. Through my fall, through my fall, through my most grievous fall. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Virgin, ever birth, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May your mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Cantamos el Gloria.
Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated to listen to the readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the captain and the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not? To stop teaching in that name. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teachings and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. Though the God of our, of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree, God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The Sanhedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismiss them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they, that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. The word of the Lord. I will praise you, Lord. You have rescued me. I will exalt you, O Lord, for you drew me clear and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought me up from the ne netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing in praise to the Lord, you his faithful ones and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime his good will. At nightfall, weeping enters in, but with the dawn rejoicing. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You changed my mourning into dancing. O oh Lord, my God, forever I will give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked and heard the voices of many angels who surrounded the throne and the living creatures and the elders. <clears throat> They were countless in number, and they cried out in a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessings. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, everything in the universe cried out, to the one who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb be blessings and honor, glory and might, forever and ever. The four living creatures answered, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. The word of the Lord. Christ 
of all. He has shown pity on all people. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Sibidis, sons, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already done, Jesus was standing at the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, no. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and were not able to put it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple from uh, whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out of, on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring something of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen. I said to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. He said this signifying but what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, Follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So today's gospel is um, 
The third time Jesus appeared to the disciples, and if you remember last Sunday we, when we also celebrated Divine Mercy Sunday, the disciples were still on this dark, closed room, afraid, uh, and then Jesus came in, in the middle of them and told them, peace, we, with, peace be with you, three times. And so now we go from closed doors, dark rooms, to the open world, to the open um, sea, and especially, you know, at dawn when they were coming from fishing. And of course, as we heard, they didn't fish anything, and then Jesus appeared to them at dawn. And then Jesus asked them, have you caught anything? Of course, they didn't got anything, which is strange, because remember, the apostles were professional fishermen. That was their profession, but they didn't cut anything. And then Jesus tell them, you know, throw the net to your right. And then they did it and they caught a lot, a lot of fish. What can we learn from this? The first thing is that as the disciples, we might experience in our lives problems, difficulties, and then it seems that we are in a dark, closed room, afraid unable to move, unable to trust again God. And it's okay when people come to me and say, Father, I'm in this situation, my mom died, I keep crying, I keep missing her. And normally I say, that's fine. Don't listen to the people, oh, get over it, oh, that's fine. No, all of us, we cry, we miss our beloved ones differently. So it is necessary for us to take time to cry, to remember, to, you know, experience that loneliness. But, of course, I also tell them, there will be the moment when you will need to move on. Again, uh, as we heard in, in the Gospel, you know, to go out, to continue your life. And then the amazing thing is, you know, they were already in the open, and then Jesus came and you know, help them to get all this fish. And in some way, that also can happen to us. When we decided to start moving on in our lives, to go back to, you know, our daily lives, God comes with us. Come show us the way. Of course, sometimes we, don't, we might not believe, we might say no trust, but if we, we do as the apostles, just throw the net onto the right side of the boat, and then they caught a lot of fishes. So in the same way, we, when we are you know, ready to start our lives, then trust in God is key for us to continue moving on on our lives, to continue trusting that even though we go through difficult, challenging times, God is still there with us. Then going to the last part of today's gospel uh, really reminds me about several things about Jesus. First, that Jesus, since the beginning of his ministry, he was, he was always very honest and sincere. He never lied to us. He told us, take, the cross, take your cross. Then there was, he was saying, you will be persecuted. And Jesus always talked to his disciples with truth, with honesty. And that's what happens to Peter, you know, after having breakfast. Jesus approached him and asked him, no, one, twice, by three times, do you love me? And just remember, how many times Peter denied Jesus? Three times. So now Jesus, you know, wants to be sure that he loves him, that he trusts him. But then, that doesn't end there. Then Jesus tells him how he will die. And that's really what called my attention, the honesty, the sincerity of Jesus with Peter, with the apostles, with all of us. And that's why we see, you know, Peter in the first reading talking openly defending his trust, his faith in Jesus, and telling the leaders, Pharisees, scribes, you know, we won't 
obey men, we will obey God. But Peter knew that by obeying God, things will be not that easy. They will be challenging. And that's why I go back to the honesty and sincerity of Jesus. Okay, you said that you love me, but then you will go through these difficult and challenging times. And that's something that maybe uh, some of us Catholics think and believe that if we, I pray, if I go to Mass, if we, you know, I pray the Rosary, I won't have problems, nobody will die, nobody... No. Sometimes it's the opposite. And as I said, during the, the uh, week Mass, you know, when most of the ones who come to daily Mass are women, and, instead, and that begins at home. I told them, you know, how many of you, and I don't know how many of you, at home is the first place where you are criticized. The first place that they say, oh, estás loca porque vas a misa. You are crazy because you go to mass. You are nuts because you pray the rosary with your family. At home, and not even mention at work, right? If they find out that you go to mass, that you are, you know, being faithful to your wife, to your husband, and praying, oh my God, how they will bully you, pura carrilla, and they are Catholics, most of them. But that's okay. Why? Because as Peter found out, God, Jesus, will be with him. No matter what, no matter how difficult and challenging the times will come, he will not be alone. The disciples felt and experienced the same, that Jesus will be always with them. Why? Because he was alive. And he told them, I will be with you. I will journey for you. So for us, hopefully, during this day, this week also, even though we have you know, dark moments, difficult challenges. God, Jesus, is with us. He journeys with us. He embraces us. And, of course, the only thing that he asks us, that we love him. And hopefully, we will really love him with all our hearts. Amen. Please stand and we proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and be invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God, begotten, not main, consensual with the Father. Through him all things were made. For our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adoring glory and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. And now we present to our Lord our petitions. Lamb that was slain, be with your people, the church, as we discover the strength flowing from your willingness to become weak. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayers. Lamb that was slain, 
Give new hope to those who seem to have been discarded by society. We especially remember refugees in search of a decent life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lamb that was slain, give us a sense of the global and local as we find our proper tasks in honoring our common home, the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lamb that was slain, help all of us to see that our particular skills make sense only as they are animated by love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lamb that was slain, be with those who feel as if they have been slain. Heal them and raise them up. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Lamb that was slain, maintain our trust in the resurrection as we pray for the resurrection of all who have died, especially for those who have died recently and for all those whose anniversaries occur at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We're praying for our sick brothers and sisters, especially we remember Santa Elizabeth Ramirez and also uh, for the birthday of Emmy Ochoa. We pray to the Lord. For our deceased brothers and sisters, remember, we remember especially Maria del Rosario Ruiz, Marciana Mendez Ruiz, Marcelino Rendon, Deacon Joe Barol, Amber Mejia, Jonathan Cuevas, Benjamin Muñoz Marín, and for all the blessed souls of purgatory, we pray to the Lord. In a little moment of silence, we present to our Lord our own personal petitions and prayers. We pray to the Lord. And we present all these prayers in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, o Lord. But in this time, above all, to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, he never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and even pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them light that you fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will give even up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coherent to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
Together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another sign of Christ's peace. Brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Then, as we announced last week, we have today the open house of our school and all the masses we have a uh, family sharing with us about uh, their experience with us in um, a Catholic school. So now I invite the Caron family. They're going to come and share with us. I think that uh, they are pretty known to us here in uh, this Mass, uh, pretty active, and uh, they're going to share with us um, about our school. All right. If you can say your names so they will get to know you. Good morning, family. Um, we are the Cadens. This is my husband, Matt, my daughter, Amanda, my son, Matthew, and my name is Liz. Uh, I just want to briefly share with you why we enrolled our kids at St. Philip Mary. St. Philip Mary has provided high quality academics with a strong focus of our Catholic faith, which is a big priority in my household. Having the feeling of a partnership between the parents and the staff with your kids being the focal point has been my experience. I love that Catholic values is not just something that is taught in theology, it's, it's something that I see that our school lives by those standards. I, we see it every Sunday with our principal being here side by side celebrating our Mass, other staff um, as Eucharistic ministers. That gives me the fulfillment that they also believe in, our, in the same Catholic uh, principles that I believe in. And then lastly, as parents, we want to raise good kids, you know, we want to raise kids to become good adults, to contribute in a positive way to our community. And I think St. Philip Neri is a good start. Um, and that's it. Thank you very much for your time. May God bless you. Thank you. Do you want to say anything? Come on. Good morning, family. Um, I say family because I see everybody here on Sunday. I might not know your names, but I know your faces and it's comforting. Same with our kids with the school. They might, they might not know your names, but a familiar face gives you comfort. And for us, we know that when we drop our kids off here at school, they're safe. Not anyone can just walk on campus. The staff is on point with everything. So that's another comforting point about the school. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So we are listening, and um, I really invite the ones who uh, have children or would like to know more about the school. Uh, also, you see some of our students in uniform. They, are, they have been preparing uh, for days, you know, all the things that they want to share with us, with you. Uh, even if you are not interested, if you just want to come and, you know, walk through the classrooms, there is a presentation like in 15, 20 minute, minutes after we end the, the, the Mass in the parish hall. And then there is a, a tour to, the, to our school. And um, it, it has been challenging for us, uh, Alex, uh, the staff, the teachers, you know, but as one time I said, uh, Father, the, you are crazy because, you know, you do so much for the school. Yeah, yeah, I'm crazy because I do believe in Catholic education. I do believe that uh, if we help one child, two, ch two children, ten children to have values, to think positive ab about life, and then, you know, to uh, go and continue the, their education in the future, I mean, it's more, more than enough. And here we have... Sorry, guys, I'm going to call you now to stand up. We have Rosemary Cosme. They are alumni from here. Stand up, Rosemary Cosme. Anyone, any, another alumni here? No? They are brother and sister, and also Gabriel is coming later. So they are now professionals. Cosme was here with us. 
Now he's in another parish, also working and, you know, continuing his career. Also Rosemary, right? Uh, we are professional and everything, so has family. Sorry, guys, you know, I <laughs> embarrass you now. Uh, thank you. Um, and um, so that's, uh, anyway, I'm crazy, yes, because I work a lot for our community and for our, our school. Yesterday I was in the roof with my brother fixing a roof. Yeah, many shouted at me, Father, get out, get down because you will fall. I'm okay, I, I'm okay, so, you know, and we do everything for the good, our students, for our good, our, our, our community. So hopefully you will go and share with us. Um, uh, come to, with us uh, to the school and know about it. Okay, other announcements? No, Alex, do you want to say anything? No? No? Okay. Sorry. Um, so, another announcement. On Friday, this Friday the 6th, uh, we won't have confessions. We're going to be busy a little bit with the um, celebration of uh, Cinco de Mayo. Um, but there will be a 7 p.m. mass, but no confessions. Also, our religious store is now selling First Communion candle uh, sets for the ones who are um, going to have their children doing the First Communion. So we have the sets there in the little store in the parking lot. Then also next Sunday, we're going to have second collection to support the Cardinal McIntyre Fund for Charity. So as always, as I said, uh, please pray. Uh, talk to your uh, family how you can help to these collections and it's not like you know one dollar more one dollar less but uh, hopefully something really coming out of prayer to help these uh, these charities also Mother's Day is coming uh, to, is coming closer so we have the Mother's Day cards for free in our office as I explained last week uh, Yes, let's pray for our moms who already passed, uh, but also especially pray for your mom. If you have the, uh, her is still alive, uh, don't wait until she will die to bring the mariachi and the banda, right? No, now, now, bring the mariachi, bring the, the banda now. Uh, uh, buy her a ticket to Cancun, no? Uh, love her now, don't. Don't wait too late, then you will be crying, you know, as I said last week. Anyway, also parents who are interested in registering their children for First Communion and Confirmation, our first orientation will be this Tuesday, May the 3rd, 7 p.m. in the parish hall. As we mentioned, our school, uh, the enrollment is already open, and today we have the open house until 1 p.m. if you want to come and visit. Um, also, our school is uh, having this raffle for uh, Cinco de Mayo or the six, uh, May 6th. Uh, so first price is 1000 uh, then 500 250 The tickets are through two, uh, two, two bucks and uh, are available at our office if anyone wants to uh, get some tickets. Now going back to the... Uh, Cinco de Mayo celebration that will be this coming uh, Friday, uh, May 6th, from 6 p.m. to uh, 11 p.m. So we're going to have mariachi, folkloric dancers, and live music to dance. Uh, tickets are available. Uh, you can go to the rectory or somebody, uh, Sergio, is back there with the tickets. Uh, it's 40 bucks per person, includes uh, the entrance, the food, the drink, and um, also the music, and you know, especially to have a good time uh, with us. And all the profits will be for uh, our community, for our church. And again, we want to go back little by little to our normal life. And uh, Cinco de Mayo has been a dance, an event that we uh, celebrated. Uh, the years before. And also, maybe you notice uh, the image of Santo Nino, uh, and also, I don't know if you notice, but also uh, we put up two other virgins that uh, we had in our office. I don't know their names, but now we have three, and our lady of Guadalupe, so we put them out 
uh, because May is the May dedicated to our Blessed Mother. And so, Jesse, Jesse actually, our seminarian, was the one who said, why don't we put them out? Okay, uh, so they are up here in case you have, I don't know the name, so I don't want to say which one is which one because I'll mess it up. So. <laughs> but they are beautiful art traditions from uh, our faith. And yes, we have a big celebration, Santo Niño. Uh, um, I don't remember, but from Puebla. Yes, I say Guentitán, but Guentitán is from Vicente Fernández, this, but it's not that one. It's another name. Uh, so we have big celebration. So our community, the point is our community is coming back to life and it's a very busy, very uh, beautiful community, always active. So that's very good for us to go back again. Then uh, we have an open job position for uh, a receptionist. So we are hiring, hiring a receptionist. If you are interested, uh, requirements, uh, bilingual, of course, and a little bit computer, uh, a little bit of uh, a smiley face, of course. <laughs> we don't want to have someone who, why are you here? Right? So uh, somebody who is outgoing, somebody who, you know, likes to greet people and also to be patient because uh, sometimes uh, people come with all this uh, bad energy there. But anyway, we have this open job receptionist. Uh, please leave your name, phone number, and then uh, Brenda or myself we will contact you and interview you, and then we'll decide uh, who. Okay, pretty good. So anyone celebrating birthdays during this day, this week, please raise your hand to uh, be recognized. We have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, congratulations, we give them a round of applause. <laughs> Any couple celebrating your um, birth and your uh, wedding anniversary uh, during this week that would like to come up here and be blessed? Any couples? No? Any, any child? Um, no? No children? No? To be presented. Okay, very good. And also, thank you very much for our students, you know, are serving with us today and all our teachers and their dedication to Alex, Alexandra also, uh, for all uh, your work uh, for our school, for our community. And as we're saying, you know, it's, it's very good that we work together as school, ministries, uh, the parish. And thank you to Jose Luis also for uh, singing for us today. Un poco desafinado, pero está bien, José Luis. Yeah? That's good. You have to be double tuned. Okay, no. Thank you, thank you. Uh, please stand. The Lord be with you. May, your mar May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and our brothers and sisters. Have a wonderful week.